Welcome back, everyone. So how to become a physician in Canada, free online course. My name is Rupi Anadabashian. And in the previous videos, we talked about observerships. We talked about exams. We talked about the Medical Council of Canada website. And now let's talk about a beast that <clears throat> makes lots of people afraid. Okay, let me move to research. Research is one of the things that like I hear a lot about and like people get really overwhelmed. And I feel it's it's a place where, it's a spot where like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself here when it comes to okay, so, so when I arrived in Canada five years ago and I applied, I had zero research and I got in from the first time. On the other hand, there are some specialties that you have to have some research to get in. Okay, if you go to my channel again, you can see my interviews um, and lots of people did research or masters and they published and that helped them to get in, to show interest. Because like doing a research project is showing that you can take a project from the beginning to the end with end result of publishing. Because it's not easy. It is not easy. Okay, but it is doable. It takes lots of time. It showed that you're a persistent person. It showed that you're interested enough to do some boring stuff like extracting data, writing papers, and publishing. But... If you don't have a research and you're ready to go for CARMS, go for it. Please don't wait. This is very important. So the question that comes to your mind as an international graduate and you arrive, okay, so I'm going to do research. How I'm going to find observe, like opportunity, okay? So first, I want to focus on your exams, okay? Because exams are what can make your file be opened. Two, I want to focus on finding observerships because observerships will get you letters of references. If you have both these things in your under your belt, now we can talk about research, okay? So research. So things to do, okay? So if you want to publish, you need to work with people who publish, okay? You can't work with anyone, okay? So this is very important. It's something I did not realize until I became a resident, until I was in residency. Even in residency, it's hard for residents to publish if they work with someone who doesn't know how to publish. Okay, so how I'm going to find someone who publishes, right? Through Google Scholar, okay? But how I'm going to find that person? Usually researchers, they have a team, okay? And they are hiring people. Lots of IMGs who I worked with, they worked as a previous like research assistant. So you can go to Kijiji or any website that posts jobs and you have to find jobs for as a research assistant, okay? And this is very important. Like that's how you're going to get in because you also get 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 paid. Uh, you might help in a clinical trial. You might help in a uh, study. And some people, like one of the uh, very interesting and amazing international maker graduates, uh, she found research through um, online group she worked with, and she worked on systematic reviews. And they never met, and uh, they published around nine or ten papers. That took them around two years, but they did lots of systematic reviews about COVID-19, and that was during the pandemic. And that was an amazing story. So either you can find a real physical job, okay, as a research assistant, or you find a research opportunity with other people who publish. The person who is supervising the project, they should be able to publish. And how to know that? You search their name. You go to Google. You search Google Scholar or PubMed. You need to see that person have lots of publications under their belt. And sometimes you might offer your help to work on a research. Like, let's say, for example, you're on a hospital website and you find someone that the hospital, like they usually have physician directory, and they mention that this is a great researcher, have lots of publications. Okay. But that researcher in his team doesn't have an opening for a research assistant position. You can just find their email and email them or try to find their number, call their assistant, and say, like, you are willing to offer your help for free. Offer them something, okay? Sell yourself, okay? And that will also get you a good letter of reference if you work with them, and that will open other doors for you, okay? So that's how it starts. Like, you need someone to open doors for you. And once the first door is open, more doors will come, okay? So, again... Either you work as a research assistant or you find someone who does lots of research, they publish, they have publications under their belt, you email them and you offer your services for free. Or you work with a group who is publishing online, uh, like the person who I, uh, I'm not sure how, how she found the opportunity, but again, it was an, uh, through her friends and acquaintances, but the group she worked with, 
they knew how to publish. Okay. Things not to do. This is very important. Very important. Very important. Please don't pay $1,000 for a research course. Taking a research course does not equal to publishing. So that's number one. Number two, showing interest in research is sometimes enough. Don't pay $1,000 to take a research course because there are very many online courses on Coursera, on University of Toronto, on University of Hamilton, I'm sorry, McMaster University to take research courses for $100 and you get certificate. But that research course will not teach you how to do research and publish again because it's different. Research is very big. There are different types of studies. You have observational studies. You have like um, cohort studies. You have um, retrospective studies. You have randomized clinical trials. Uh, you have review papers. You have editorials. So research articles are very uh, different. And you might get like you might do a course on Coursera for a systematic review. You might do a course on how to write a review paper. You might do a course and you can add these courses to your CV. That being said, that being said, those courses for $100 or maybe less or maybe for free, okay? And by doing those courses, you're showing that you have interest in doing research. You don't need always to publish. Only showing interest is also okay. Okay, so we did the courses. Please don't pay $1,000 for a research course. Okay, that being said, also, if you work with someone, make sure when they publish something or present something, it's really publishable. There is lots of misconception in IMGs uh, because we are not very exposed. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't exposed to research when I came here. And uh, so I saw some people who like they have in their CV published this article and it's a couple of names and then like it's it's a link i click on the link and it opens an online uh page on wordpress wordpress it's a place to host uh, like it's it's a website hosting uh place that is not considered publication publication it's something that is published in a peer reviewed journal or presented in a conference as an abstract maybe Having your name under an article and clicking on that article, taking you to a web page somewhere and you wrote an abstract or like a paragraphs and calling that research, that's not a research. Unfortunately, this year I helped lots of applicants in their CVs and personal statements. And uh, I, I've noticed that like under research, it's just like an article. It's not published in a journal. It's not published in a conference. And it's somewhere in the internet that no one reads it, no one cares about it. Please don't do that to yourself. Either find a real research assistant job or offer your services for free for someone who knows to publish in an academic center or work with a group who knows how to publish. Any person you work with for research, search their name under Google Scholar. Make sure they know how to publish and they have other publications, recent publications. And this is very important. Okay. Moving on to the next step is volunteering. This is very important. First, to familiarize yourself, to build connection. Also, it's very fulfilling. For example, I'm doing this course. I did many online courses for free because I enjoy it. Like I'm, I, I like helping people and like it's nice to help people as well. Volunteering opportunities are, so let's talk about opportunities, okay? So when I arrived, I found a volunteering opportunity in the Ottawa hospital. Uh, so you can find volunteering opportunities in the hospital, okay? Search volunteer hospital name in your area. You can, every hospital is asking for volunteers. My job was very simple. I was at the Ottawa hospital, emergency campus. I stand on the door and I guided people through the emergency or help them to sit on a wheelchair every single Thursday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for four or five months. I lived 
far away from Ottawa. Driving was a hassle. I found someone who drove, who drove me. I didn't have a car at that time and they helped me. Some people volunteer through like there are runs and marathons and stuff like that, volunteer through that and help. And I, I remember one of the people that I interviewed in my channel, she volunteered uh, through a run and she found a physician who was doing a 5K or 10K run. And she asked her if she can help her in her clinical work, I believe, or research. I can't remember the details. So they got to know each other through that. She built connection and that physician opened more doors for her. You can volunteer in your community center. If you're in a BC or Manitoba, they, ha they, they, they have like high need for people to volunteer with underserved population, like um, with indigenous people. There are lots of volunteering opportunities with people uh, like for uh, homeless uh, and like in shelters also like they need volunteers. So volunteering opportunities are a lot. Find a volunteering opportunity that is related to the healthcare and can open doors for you to build connections. And at the same time, fulfilling you and making you feel that you're providing to the community. Um, for example, if you volunteer in somewhere that you're giving your time, but you are not able to build connections, it is good. Please don't get me wrong, but also like you have to put the oxygen mask on your face before putting it on your friend's face, right? In the, when if, if the, uh, the, uh, the, the plane is crashing, right? So you have to help others. Also make sure that you need to find an opportunity to help yourself through that volunteering experience. That being said, uh, again, whatever volunteering you do, it's going to be beneficial. You can put it on your CV. It shows that you're a person who cares about the community. It shows that the person, you are a person who advocates for people and advocacy is one of the can made roles. And uh, it's always can be done, put on your CV and you never know what doors that volunteering opportunity will open for you. Okay, moving on. Okay, so you are doing some observerships. You're a good position to get letters. Then you wrote the exams or you're writing the exams and that's under control now you're trying to get yourself into research and volunteering but also there are other things you can do to enrich your cv and gain more access to the canadian healthcare system and that brings us to conferences if you want to do family medicine if you want to do internal medicine or whatever you want to do okay there are tons of conferences and usually there are discounts for international medical graduates. Uh, so just search conference, internal medicine, conference, family medicine, and you can attend them online or you can go in person. Going in person, it's nicer because you meet lots of physicians there. You go in and you introduce yourself, you talk to them, you say, hey, like, this is my name, this is my background. Um, and if you are looking for observership opportunity or if you're looking for something else, uh, you can ask if you can join them or something. Uh, but again, don't be awkward. You can't just like go and meet someone who never met in your life and like ask them for observership, right? So you have to build a nice connection. You have to talk to them. You have to introduce yourself, have a conversation about what's going on in the conference and then ask them if you can like contact them for observership and explain why you are attending this, okay? And always, if you want help from people, ask them how you can help them, okay? People are willing to help if they see that you're also willing to give something, okay? Um, there is a great book. It's called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, so it talks about this concept. Like when you, uh, in the beginning of your journey as an IMG, you're going to need lots of help, okay? Uh, but also remember, whatever, whatever you've done, even if you've done nothing, you have some skills to offer for people to help you. So it's not always about money. You have some skills. You can offer those skills to people. They can help you. And in return, they can help you back. Okay, so find conferences. Attend conferences. Uh, if you cannot, if you have the, like, uh, again, sometimes they are costly, 100, 200. God knows how much I haven't been for a while because of the COVID. So you attend conferences. Again, conferences can be under your CV. Go to my CV online course and you can find it. Um, and... Uh, 
you build connections and you know people through conferences and it's something can be done under can be put in your CV. Okay. What else I can do to make my application stand out? Okay. Continuing medical education. What does that mean? Lots of universities in Canada offer online courses. Even Coursera offer, offer online courses. Courses about indigenous health, courses about social determinants of health, courses about quality improvement. I remember when I applied to residency, I uh, had this course about, uh, it was from Harvard. I paid a hundred bucks. I got like a certificate, a hundred bucks. That's what I paid. I got a certificate from Harvard to because I attended online course about quality improvement and I put that under my CV. And that course really like was a nice thing to talk about in my interviews and in my residency, I did quality improvement project. Like I like quality improvement. It's very interesting um, thing, I think. Uh, so because like I, I, I like to improve the place that I am in and that's why I'm doing this, right? So I know some people who took like courses about indigenous health. I know, again, Google is there. It's like, it's at your fingertip. Uh, search about topic you're interested about, take a course, and you can go to, like, um, I think Hamilton offer, like, McMaster University offer lots of online courses. Toronto offer lots of online courses. Some of them paid, some of them for free. BC offer lots of online courses. If there, if you can't find any there that interests you, go to Coursera. Something about quality improvement, something about indigenous health, something about social determinants of health, something about related to the field that you want to apply in. For example, I'm doing a free online course right now about machine learning, and it's something that I'm very in developed interest in recently. And it's for free. It's in Coursera, man. Like all the knowledge is there for free for you, right? Um, so continuing medical education again, it's something you can add to your CV. You can improve yourself, and uh, yeah. So that's about continuing medical education and online courses. Okay. Uh, those are the things that usually you need. And then you'll, uh, by finishing, like getting letters, getting observerships, doing some research, online courses, volunteering, you build a nice CV. And every day update or every week update your CV, add all those things. And after a year, um, you're going to see that you build a nice CV. You're fulfilling the requirements of the CanMed roles. Uh, I just want to share some lessons learned. Uh, over the years, I interviewed lots of physicians. I interviewed lots of international medical graduates on my channel. And I'm, although I'm moving now to the U.S. to do my fellowship, um, I just want to spread the word that is, it is doable to match in Canada as a physician and just to open some eyes because like there are tons of information about the U.S., none about Canada. Canada needs lots of physicians. Canada needs lots of talent. Okay. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the lessons learned.